Hey everybody, this is Armando Torres, and you're listening to the show before the show. And I'm Paige Wesley. And with us we have... Mikey Randolph, here! Yay! 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 Present! <laughs> uh, yes, we have a very... <laughs> very fucking... <laughs> Boy, do we have an episode for you. Um, I don't want you to think it's not good. Because it's fantastic. <laughs> that's a little too that's a little too hard of a sell. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's a really good show. It's it's really goofy. It's really off the rails, and it continues to get off the rails a lot. Um, it does get a little bit dark towards the end, but I feel like we bring it back, and there is just so much goofing in the first half, probably more than the first half of this episode. It's such a good time, and we are joined as uh, as we were last week by Mikey Randolph from Horror Virgin. Yes. Thank you Yay. for having me. I'm so excited to hear the end of the story. Yes. Oh man, it was so, it's so much fun, and it was so great to have you again. Uh, before we start the show, we have got some news and reviews. Uh, first piece of news is uh, we have a Patreon that is releasing content. Woo! Woo! Um, we have a Patreon. You can go to Patreon.com/slash Cult Podcast for just five dollars a month. You get access to our bonus content. There's a bunch of other fun tiers there as well. Uh, hey, also, if you are looking for a new place to listen to the show, can we suggest Rooster Teeth? Cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> That's a new one. There you That's go. a new one we haven't done yet. Taking it all the way out to the farm today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Rooster Teeth so much. There's a lot of really, really fun content there. Um, there's a bunch of shows that I've liked watching. Uh, a couple of them. Uh, Ruby, fucking Red vs. Blue, fucking Last Laugh Season 1, fantastic show. Uh, and they've got some really great podcasts there as well. Uh, like Good Morning From Hell, Red Web, Black Box Down, Face Jam, new one I've been getting into that I really, really like. Face Jam is awesome. I identify yeah. very much with the vibe of that show. <laughs> oh. yeah. I love Face Jam. Um, go check those out, uh, roosterteeth.com, or download the app on your Amazon Fire Stick, your Roku television, your Xbox, or your mobile device, uh, and I believe some others as well. You can probably, honestly... If you've got like a, if you've got like a prosthetic eye, I bet you could install it in the eye, like a robot eye, like like a Terminator eye, like a Terminator. But instead of showing like weaknesses, it's just like we went to Taco Bell this week and shit happened. It's just <laughs> fuck face asshole. Yeah, <laughs> like that, like the show fuck face. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go to Rooster Teeth. It's a fantastic place. Um, and before we start, we've got a five-star review. Uh, really quick, I just I think this is very pertinent. We have a one-star review. This is from Was- Ross Walker. Two Guns is their name. And they say, stop making jokes. The episodes would be 50% shorter and 100% better if Armando stopped making jokes. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so it'd be mean. Like, it'd be like 10 minutes long. No, I absolutely love that. I feel the same way. And uh, also, I just, I, it doesn't, that one didn't make me feel bad. I don't want you to think that I'm mad. I genuinely laughed at that. <laughs> uh, I was like, you don't one. get us, clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one comes to us from Math is Divine, who also does not get us in our whole vibe. Um, math is Divine. They say, <laughs> learning lots. You guys have given me a lot to think about. Just listening for the right group to sell my soul to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, yeah, I don't know if we mentioned, but we have a Patreon. and. Uh... <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Um, without any further ado, let's get into this wild fucking episode. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> For the purposes of this podcast, we define a cult as organizations that rally behind an entity or leader who espouse beliefs outside the norm, organizations that require physical or monetary sacrifice as a condition of membership, organizations in which the doctrines followed by the leaders are different than that of the followers, organizations in which isolation is encouraged either by commune living or by a policy of disconnection from outside relationships, and organizations that actively recruit new members. All cults might have some or all of these traits, and as always, these, These are, are our opinions. opinions. 
Thank you for tuning into Cult Podcast. I'm Paige Wesley. And I'm Armando Torres. And with us we have Mikey Randolph. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I like that you always say your name like you're just like you just got on the stand in a very important <laughs> court case. <laughs> I want to be clear. I want to be clear. You're you're not on trial, but you are a key witness. As in, you witnessed where I set my keys down, and now I need you to tell me where they are, so I'm not trapped in the house. Your Honor, I plead the fifth. So we are back with Mikey Randolph. I am here uh, for part two of our series on Fiat Lux, and it's. Very confusing leader, uh, Yoriella, a.k.a. Erica Gessler. Now, to recap, because this was over a week ago, mm-hmm. there's there's been some time, and I had totally forgotten what cult it was until right now, and then I was <laughs> like, oh, right, it's the woman who has a horseshoe stuck in her head. <laughs> and, <laughs> How could you forget? And wears the, cra- <laughs> wears the crazy wigs, Unarius copycat. Got it. Got yeah, it, got yeah, it, got yeah, it, got it. yeah. Yeah, I, I have a little recap for you in case uh, in case you need one. But uh, before that, we do have some sources. Same as last week, we have a 1992 documentary on Fiat Lux. Uh, we have the Oxford Handbook of New Religious Movements by James R. Lewis. And then finally, we have articles from the Geistige Lodges. That's a fun word to say because it always sounds like you're saying it wrong. The Geistige Lodges official website. Last week, we started covering the story of Erika Gessler, a Swiss-born Christian spiritualist with dreams of becoming a somebody. And it turns out all she needed was a little push. Unfortunately, <laughs> behind that horse. Unfortunately, that push was off the back of a horse and headfirst onto the ground. <laughs> I should not. I shouldn't be laughing at this woman's head injuries. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But it has like a Tom and Jerry quality to oh, it that I yeah. just can't escape. I heard she went to uh, Acme, St. Acme uh, <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know, but Itchy and Scratchy are ascended masters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagine me throwing her whole body to as close to the spike as possible to see if I can win at the game. <laughs> <laughs> to try and loop the horseshoe yeah, over her head. Yeah, oh right. my god. <laughs> oh. Uh, after sustaining Oof. one hell of a brain injury, uh Erica discovered that she had some intense spiritual powers. Somehow the veil had been lifted from her mind and she was now able to communicate with spirits and angels. And these voices revealed her destiny. Plus, with that veil lifted, we could all see the horseshoe print. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, damn, girl, you got a head like a belt buckle. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) The best part about dating someone like that is that if you... (laughs) If you, if your TV doesn't have good reception, she could just go touch it and like <laughs> just conduct radio <laughs> yeah, she, waves. She's an antenna. That's the joke. So let me get this straight. You look like my belt buckle. You fix my TV. <laughs> I got one last question for you, darling. Do you have any opinions about Texas <laughs> and the fortitude of its people? <laughs> I might have to marry you. Um <sighs> Yeah, the voices revealed her destiny. She wasn't Erica Gessler. She was Uriella, reincarnation of the Virgin Mary and the personal mouthpiece for none other than Jesus Harold Christ. I forgot uh, about that! Wait, <laughs> <laughs> wait uh, wouldn't you say maybe the personal bridal? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This makes sense because I always think that horse girls are a little off. <laughs> <laughs> but what about horse girls that are the bridal for Jesus Harold Christ? God. Mikey, Mikey, she wasn't a little off. She was fully off the horse. She fell. <laughs> That's how she got kicked in the head. Duh. <laughs> I just keep thinking of like Christmas vacation where it's like fell down a well, eyes are crossed, kicked by a horse, impaled with a horseshoe, right back together. <laughs> I don't know. (laughs) Oh, my God. So using funds from her strictly platonic older husband, 
Uh, right, right, yeah. right. Because she's living at his old folks' home, right? Yeah. <laughs> she began forming her own school of spiritualism that she called the Order of Fiat Lux. And at the end of part one, we covered her daring looks. Uh, elegant all-white dresses, some flashy bling, and a wig as big as Texas itself. Um, and Paige was actually the one to point out that her look is very reminiscent of like the old Bible Belt Baptists, um, yeah, the, like kind of like revivalist style. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Uh, and that is barely just scratching the surface on what she took from that kind of movement. Uh, Uriella, as she was now known, took a lot of influence uh, from the Baptist and revivalist preachers that we have seen here on the show before. Her sermons were just as lively as her fucking looks. I mean, yeah, yeah. The higher the hair, the closer to Jesus. <laughs> uh, but then also, if God can lead you to it, He can lead you through it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, when you look back in the sand, and there's only two hoof prints. <laughs> That was Jesus. That's, That's when she was still on the horse. That's when we still. Yeah. It was before the accident. We don't like to remember it, so we keep this poem here just in case she forgets what happened. Memory loss. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you guys didn't know this, but Jesus was a centaur. <laughs> that just made the Bible so much cooler, <laughs> dude. Like it's it's already full of blood, guts, murder, and and horrifying war. But like, yeah. If they were centaurs also? No, just now Jesus. Now it's Lord of the fucking Rings. Just Jesus. <laughs> just Jesus. Just Jesus was a centaur. He was born in a barn. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's a good... <laughs> oh, so my stupid. God. I know. Oh. I'm not even funny. I'm just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, You're like, how'd you get God. on a podcast? I was like, I'm the dumbest person who does podcasts. <laughs> no. Come on. No, Joe Rogan's no. still around. <laughs> yeah. Give yourself some credit. Still kicking. Oh, my God. You just don't have a float tank and ass loads of DMT. <laughs> but you will when that package gets there. Happy birthday, Mikey. What's up? <laughs> it's uh, probably a felony to ship stuff to me. Shh. What are you, a fucking narc? <laughs> what? No, what? <laughs> no, yes, no. No, I had it taken, uh, what do they call it? The Jesus Pony Express. It's just going... <laughs> Right it's over just there. a centaur who shows up at your house like, did you order some fucking DMT in a float tank? I had to carry this shit all the way here. Yeah, you see a centaur and you're like, I'm not even high yet. And he's like, that's how good it is, dude. That's how good it is. This is going to be a hell of a weekend. Oh, man. So, yeah, she took a lot of influence from this revival, uh, this revivalist and kind of Baptist style. Uh, but she threw in just enough New Age bullshit to keep theosophy nerds on the hook, too. Fiat Lux's meetings were held in a luxury retirement via mm. that she and her husband Max lived at, and they started kind of slow. For about an hour, she would lead her 40-plus followers in transcendental meditation, which, by the way, if you're not familiar, it's basically just normal meditation but with a mantra. This is kind of what most people assume all meditation is, um, but it's specifically transcendental meditation. That's like the image of the dude sitting on a mat, legs crossed, and he's like, Om. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Although I'm just picturing her pulling crystals out from under her. <laughs> Except yeah. For, yeah, she's like, nay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I looked at her and I thought her mantra was just like, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> These are really fun. I like it, actually. Queso. <laughs> Uh, and while most people practice meditation to increase mindfulness, Uriella had a different goal in mind. But to be fair, she also had a horseshoe in her mind. What's up? <laughs> Fucking roasted oh, dog. So good. <laughs> That's so good. 
Oh, Uriella claimed that through transcendental meditation, she was able to communicate with Jesus and God. And after she was done meditating, she would open her eyes and spring into action. She would loudly proclaim the new word of God with a lot of fanfare. She would start running around. She would start speaking in tongues and she would start screaming at the top of her lungs about the things that God and Jesus had told her. He told me to watch out for that horse. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, he's not wrong. The whole, the truth. The the best part about this, by the way, is that there are a, there's a, there are videos of her doing this shit on YouTube. And I, I highly recommend that you check them out because she is straight up just doing like a Baptist or like the revivalist, you know, like the kind of like energetic preacher in a tent in, in the field somewhere in the South, just like yelling and screaming, screaming. Yeah. But all of that is in German, which is a really hard language to be excited in, in front of a crowd of cheering white people. Well, I mean, I've seen videos like that, but it was never good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's that's what I'm saying. Like, she's just like, not a good look. Jesus is all about peace and love, but it's just like, Oh, man. Such an aggressive language. She says Jesus too hard. It sounds like Juden. It's like real bad. <laughs> real, real bad. Well, I mean, I was in a weird position today where I watched a, a friend's like show thing and they tried to prank someone by having them identify paintings and all of the paintings were Hitler. And <gasps> I knew before they revealed it. <laughs> And every time it came up, I was like, oh, that's a Hitler painting. Oh, that's also a Hitler painting. And then I was like, what does this say about me? <laughs> like, this is this is upsetting for me that I know what Hitler's paintings look like. Paige, can I can I share with you an early birthday gift that I got for you? <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> I bought a Hitler original. <laughs> oh, boy. No, it was the first one was a painting of uh, Kashel Nuschwanstein, and I was like, "Oh, I bet that's a Hitler painting." And they're like, "It's a Hitler painting," and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> that's he's not. The worst part is he's not terrible, but it's just like <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Armando <laughs> says, Hitler "No, no, was not no, 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 no." Let me specify. Let me specify. Let me specify. <laughs> Let me specify. I was talking about the war crimes. Now, here- <laughs> 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 no, I think yeah. Obviously, I'm talking about the fucking painting. Like, he's not he's not the world's worst artist, but I. It's easy to when you see his paintings. It's easy to imagine somebody just being like, "This is, this is uninspired." This is yeah. Terrible. It's they're very boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I can Im- I don't know. It's just like the same thing where like I've seen it a thousand times where somebody's like really gung ho about doing something artistic and then they do it and you're like, I mean, you did it. That's the best I can say about this. And then they just get really angry. <laughs> yeah. What What do you think? Well, it's a painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you see that I used a lot of this one color? It's called white. It's the best one. anyway yeah a lot of her fucking a lot of her uh sermons sounded a lot more like rallies and they're very fun to watch it makes a lot more sense why like german people talk like they're all fucking depressed all the time it's just like if you you show when they get excited (laughs) we get scared you have a guy just like excited he bought an xbox but you have like a you have a family like hiding in a corner yeah like like, oh fuck (laughs) Uh, oh man, <laughs> Jesus! Like I have to whisper, I'm excited, but I don't want to scare people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Uh, another staple of Uriel's sermons, which she also ripped straight out of the South, uh, was, or maybe not the South, but definitely like I would say, maybe Paige, you could back me up, maybe more revivalist. But she loved to do spiritual healing. Oh, faith mm. healing! Mm-hmm. Woohoo! Um, yeah, I mean, this is it, like charismatic faith healing. It, it's pretty, it kind of goes hand in hand with revivalist. I think today, modern day, we see it a lot more in televangelism. Yes. But yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, I am not a Christianity expert by any sense of the. That's what. That's what's actually really upsetting is when we started talking about Hitler, and I said the thing, and I said the thing that's definitely going to be the clip for the episode. <laughs> when I when I definitely said that thing, I felt really bad because I was like, I don't know shit about Christianity, but I own pieces of Nazi money. I know everything about white supremacy. It's almost like at a certain point, when is it too much? Oh, fuck. Before this, I joined the clan. Do you guys remember that? At what point is yeah, it too much? Yeah, you did much? join the clan at one point. At what point is it too much? <laughs> You're on a watch list. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> definitely. We're, we're all on a watch yeah. list, Mikey. <laughs> yeah. To anyone who guests on this show, by the way, automatic watch list. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning into the watch list. I'm Paige Wesley. <laughs> and I'm standing right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and with us, we have <laughs> your insane anxieties. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. oh, this has been a wacky week. We had truck executioner on Horror Virgin the other day. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> I've never heard that word in my entire life and I need it in my life more. <laughs> it's so good. It's a fake monster truck name. Yeah. Oh, I got that. I got that immediately. <laughs> See, Mikey, that, sh- that should be your full-time job. Yeah, I, I was truck. like, what? I just started like throwing out monster truck names the whole time and I was like, what? This is my call. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, did you did you take a sip of Natty Light before you did it? I heard that. I don't... I don't- <laughs> That's like the go-to. Oh, man. Just smoking weed out of a muffler. What about truck executioner? Truck executioner is so <laughs> it's good. It's the funniest shit ever. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am disappointed because I thought that was the name of a horror movie. And I was really upset <laughs> because I thought you had found a monster truck themed horror movie. I don't mean like fucking Carrie. Okay. It's Carrie is the closest we get. But I, no, 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 no. I mean, we we call it truck executioner. Most people know it as maximum overdrive. Oh my god! If I was gonna name your monster truck, I think it would be the Colt Pod Penetrator. <laughs> no, I don't like that I at all. I do not like it. <laughs> uh, clearly, Our, it would be the Doom Buggy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God, wait a, I like how through every step of that, of him trying to like come up with a name, it was like the cult. <laughs> wow, I should have listened to more episodes. Pod. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I think they had like a gator lawyer at some point. Cast. Oh, <laughs> no. I got to say something. Monster truck. Penetrator. Penetrator. <laughs> and, he was, and he was like, yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, that was like when somebody said we needed to do a cat cult and we came up with Scratch Davidians oh on the fly. <laughs> and that's, I've never been that funny ever. I'll never be that funny again. It's fine. <laughs> oh, the deprogrammer nader <laughs> Black Lightning. <laughs> the D, the deprogrammer nader nader <laughs> <laughs> There it all, is. I knew I'd find it. Oh my. All of this is getting cut out anyway, right? That's fine. Whatever, Danny. Danny. You leave in what is. <laughs> you gold. leave in what is funny. All right. <laughs> you don't get. You don't. You hold the keys to the castle now. <laughs> Danny, definitely leave in when Armando was like, Hitler wasn't terrible. <laughs> Okay, first of all, first of all, yes, do leave that in. <laughs> Secondly, isolate Mikey's audio when he just said <laughs> that phrase that he just said. Oh, no, no! Hitler wasn't terrible. And now it's now we have mutual destruction, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> now your time has come. Oh. oh, my God. Speaking of things that are... <laughs> are Terrible. Uh, Uriella was practicing spiritual healing, which is what she called faith healing, which is something that we have seen time and time again. Uh, Mikey, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the term because it's very confusing because without context, spiritual healing sounds a lot like going to therapy, which is good. But in reality, she claimed to be able to heal any illness using her mind, which is bad. Gotta lay hands to get somebody to walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and by lay hands, I mean catch these hands. Yeah. I will punch you till you walk. <laughs> I will fight the demons out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go 12 rounds with the demons, motherfucker. 
<laughs> oh my god now normally with spiritual healing you see people using you know the hand of god they're like uh, uh fucking look look she can walk and look this boy can see and you there after i lay my hand upon you you will no longer feel the need to play chumba wumba in every party scene <laughs> in every movie <laughs> since the early 2000s <laughs> you are cured when he lay when he laid that hand, it was just a big foam finger. Like, <laughs> and you are blessed, my son. <laughs> <laughs> like, but seriously, though, I know that I read that line when I was really high, but I watched like two movies back to back. And in both movies, it was just, I get knocked down and I get up again. I was like, Dude, who the fuck is like a music guy in Hollywood is his cousin Chumba Wumba? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> No, it's just that when he was editing that movie and editing mm-hmm. the sound together for the movie, he drank a whiskey drink, he drank a vodka drink, he drank a lager <laughs> drink, he drank a cider drink. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. So he used the songs that remind him of the best times. <laughs> I didn't want to do this to you. I didn't want to, I really didn't. But the first thing Uriel heard when she fell off the horse was, I get knocked down! And I get knocked down! <laughs> Pissing the night away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is what we normally see when we see spiritual healing or faith healing. But Uriella had mm-hmm. a different form of it, which, as you could have told, we, I mean, it, we're, she's calling it spiritual healing. Um, and her, you know, her presentation may have been the same as like the old revivalist or the current televangelist, but the method was fully theosophy based new age bullshit. She was the mm. inventor of a magical tonic that she claimed could cure anything from migraines and back pain to cancer and AIDS. What was in it? It was her own bathwater page. <laughs> no, oh! it was not. No, it was not. It was her own bathwater. Shoko water. Asahara in the hands yeah, or modern day uh, for our for our Gen Z listeners, Bella Delphine in the house. Different people, same tactic. Makes you think, doesn't it? It was oh. it was her own bathwater. Uh, the recipe was mm. you you take you take Uriella's bathwater. You throw in a few herbs, a couple of prayers, and then you stir it nonstop for exactly twenty one minutes. Not twenty minutes. Not twenty two minutes. You listening to me, Mikey? Twenty one minutes on the dot, and then bam. You've got yourself a recipe for medicine that this world has never seen. And mm. a pretty good recipe for people broth, by the way, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> mm-hmm. Space mm-hmm. Viagra. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. It's medicine we've never seen. <laughs> <laughs> And as batshit crazy as this stuff sounds, a lot of people claimed that it really worked. And I have a theory as to why it was so successful. Uh, You see, in America, we see this shit all the time. We see new age snake oil salesmen that have a cheap cure for whatever ails you. They can sell you something and it's going to help you and you're going to be better and it's the best thing that you've ever had. But in Switzerland, they don't have to fucking pay for it. And it is the best healthcare in the world. (laughs) (laughs) okay so the only people who are coming to her for this healing cure they're coming with minor shit like i have the cold or my body is achy and they drink a tall glass of people broth they tell themselves that it's going to help and then they get better so it's basically just the placebo effect and then they tell Mm. themselves like oh well it helped that time it'll help the next time it'll probably help every time and surprise a lot of these people were just dehydrated (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm thirsty and she cured me. <laughs> well, to be fair, all the people that bought Bella Delphine's bathwater were also very thirsty. Um, yeah, the thirst was <laughs> real. Yeah, that it still blows my fucking mind. I cannot believe how how much of me feeling like shit constantly was just me being dehydrated for years on end. <laughs> I was, I, f- I was like, yeah, I feel terrible all the time. And my doctor was like, well, how much water do you drink? And I was like, I don't, you know, like a couple glasses a week, maybe. And she was like, what the fuck? No, <laughs> you have to drink so much more than that. Um, yeah, but don't over drink. Cause then you'll die. And that comes from me personally. I'm a doctor. Uh, <laughs> oh, slide in my DMs. <laughs> 
So I think at first it was just people with minor ailments. That's all it was. So that you know, whenever mm-hmm. somebody said that it worked, they thought that it worked, but in the same way that like, I don't know, fucking NyQuil made the flu go away. You know, it helps with the symptoms or it helps with your brain thinking it helps with the symptoms anyway. You could say she got close like hand grenades <laughs> and horseshoes. <laughs> <laughs> It's strange that you planned on not doing the punchline, but I do respect the bit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I like that all of your bits are accompanied by uh, 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 a, a very distinct, like, anxiety. <laughs> he just knows he could be murdered by the executioner at yeah. any moment. I don't know, but every single one of your punchlines has come with like an existential realization where <laughs> you were just like, like horseshoes or hand grenades. <laughs> I'll never be happy. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know if I'm sad or if I'm just dehydrated. <laughs> oh my <sighs> God. <laughs> Uh, and regardless, w- regardless on whether it worked or not, that's what we were talking about. Word spread fast in the Christian spiritualist community, and soon the small retirement villa was packed to the gills every fucking day. Unfortunately, Uriella's miracle bathwater didn't work for everyone. I would also, just putting this out there, say that it may have not worked for anyone. It may have been... <laughs> <laughs> what was really gonna kick her bath water into gear was bath salts <laughs> like have you drank this cure it's amazing would you say armando that her bath bomb oh my god <sighs> yeah i mean it, yeah yeah i would mikey yes i would i'm gonna call todd and see I'm if he sorry. can come on the show <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't get invited. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. It was a joke. Like I'm being a bull. It's a bit. You're doing great. I did like your joke. Okay. This is my existential part of this. I'm like, maybe this is why other podcasts don't like me. (laughs) Armando bullies everyone that comes onto the show. I don't know why. Well, Blaine needs it. He's too, he's got too much much. going on. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, but he's also like five foot six. So like, you know. (laughs) Oh, man. Unfortunately, uh, it turns out that her bathwater did not work for everyone slash anyone. And in the early 1980s, her rich and sexless husband, Max Bearstringer, was starting to feel, fall ill. My diagnosis? Balls too big. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> not enough bathwater? Shringing too many bears? <laughs> no, nah, man, ball's too big. Too much cum floods over into the pee ball, and I'm pretty sure that's how Elvis died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty that. sure that's how, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's what killed Houdini. This one's, <laughs> hold on, Paige, this one's a lot more fucked up. I'm pretty sure that's how JFK was assassinated. <laughs> giant ball. A lot of people... Th- one exploded and then it shot yep. him on accident. No, w- what do you think the grassy knoll is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people got wrong. He thought it was he yeah. thought it was the assy knoll and then he just fucking nutted. <laughs> JFK <laughs> JFK famous not sex haver John F Kennedy. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. It, it wasn't his ball. It was a Secret Service guy standing behind him that hadn't been laid in forever. And then they oh. hit a bump. He fell. He accidentally nutted. Yeah. And then, oh, no, the president's dead. Oh, no. We've, We've all been all there. Been there. <laughs> Either way, that's how Max died. Uh, and he died in 1982. Do we actually not know how he died and we're just attributing it to giant balls or did he die from having giant no, balls? No, I have no idea how he died. I'm just assuming because oh, okay. he didn't have sex for the last several years of his life. Um, <laughs> that we know <laughs> that of. That we know of, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. He died in 1982, but Uriella wasn't super beat up about it uh, because she already had a new boo. Ooh, oh. drama. I got high before this, and it's starting to show. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh uh, my god. She did have a new boo. Uh Kurt Warder was a new member of Fiat Lux in the early 1980s. But before that, he had been a Catholic priest for over two decades. Ooh, see, it's the like forbidden fruit of it yeah. that makes him hot, probably. Yeah. And he had he had to his credit, he had always prided himself on having an open mind. An open mind, uh, or so much of an open mind that he decided to attend one of Uriella's sermons. And from the moment that he heard her speak, he was sold. There wasn't a doubt in his mind that this strange tall haired woman had tapped into something more real than he ever could have in his 20 years with the church. And he began attending sermons as frequently as he could. And this was kind of a little shitty to his own flock uh, because Kurt regularly missed services. He gave new age twists on Bible stories and he was even accused of dipping into the church's collection basket uh yeah after finding out about a secret swiss bank account with his and uriella's names on it the local archbishop had him excommunicated from the catholic church damn that's like that's intense yeah yeah Yeah, mikey it's a little much (laughs) it's the it's it's them telling them you can't be a catholic as part of the church anymore i did look up excommunication by the way and uh apparently the way it works is like you're still supposed to be a catholic but you're just not allowed to do it at or near or with the church at all um yeah also like excommunications for the most part have stopped but every so often there's what's known as an automatic excommunication which is just like something that you do and it's like an automatic like you're out of the church it doesn't matter who knows you should know and god knows um oh so like i guess molesting people no (laughs) no surprisingly mikey that doesn't count surprisingly that just gets you a transfer um (laughs) but apparently you know what does get you automatically excommunicated is having any part in an abortion so that means if you are getting an abortion if you convince somebody to get an abortion if you are the doctor performing the abortion if you drive somebody to get an abortion if you have any if If somebody is going to get an abortion and they're like, oh, I'm hungry first, and they stop at a McDonald's and they order McDonald's, everyone that works at that McDonald's is excommunicated automatically. (laughs) If you made that egg McMuffin, God's coming for you. (laughs) Oh, so what? This egg's okay, but this egg isn't? Where's the line? (laughs) (laughs) You can't scramble them both. (laughs) Oh, man. This is a very fun episode. (laughs) Uh, The point being is that I found out that you can be automatically excommunicated, but for the most part, automatic excommunications are sort of resolved and they used to have to be resolved by, I think the Pope. And then the Pope was like, I don't care about this shit. And then I went down to the bishops and then the bishops were like, this happens way too frequently. And now I think that any priest can uh, absolve you of uh, an automatic uh, excommunication, which is just kind of fucking trippy. Oh. But yeah, you're right. They should maybe expand the things that you can do to not be allowed in the church anymore. Hint. Hint. <laughs> yeah, like wear Crocs. <laughs> uh, so. And this is the sign of the croc. And then it's just <laughs> dotting a bunch of holes in your body. <laughs> oh, man. But So this guy was com- excommunicated from the Catholic Church, and it didn't matter to him at all. His name was Kurt, by the way. I just need you to remember it, Kurt. Um, Mm -hmm, but that didn't matter to Kurt at all. He had proven his love to Uriella and the two were married in December of 1983. And he even took her name sort of, he became known as Uriella's right hand man, Uriel. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's like if Jake changed his name to Pagethan. It's like, this is nothing. This means nothing. Pagethan? Pagethan. Like Jonathan, but for Paige. Why Why? Why wouldn't it be Page Cub? What about Pagerick? Pagerick. <laughs> I don't know. Pagethan, I think, might be my favorite. Because it's kind of like Pageathon, <laughs> which is what happens if you listen to all of my podcasts back to back. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into Colt Podcast. I'm Pageathan Wesley. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, Uriel O 
became so he got to uh ride it <laughs> jump His on pony. it yeah <laughs> jump on it let's do it giant wigs and horseshoes <laughs> oh my god uh silly names aside kurt slash i like it when you pull my horseshoe <laughs> Why wouldn't you say Maine? <laughs> <laughs> or Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> the embedded horseshoe is where That's, I went for. Oh, I forgot she had the embedded horseshoe. I was thinking you were... F- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's much better. Um, <laughs> silly names aside. Silly names and confusing sexual positions aside. <laughs> Uh, Kurt slash Uriello was instrumental in Fiat Lux's success. He used his knowledge of the Bible to help canonize all of Uriella's revelations, mostly because over the past three years, she had said a lot of crazy shit, and a lot of that shit contradicted other crazy shit that she also said within that three years. There was just like any time, every day, because she's doing these services every day, she would just make shit up for about an hour uh, and a lot of the times it would contradict something that she had said like a week ago or a month ago, you know, it's so he took all of that and edit- editorialized it into a nice cohesive narrative. It's almost like she has a traumatic head injury and that's impacting her ability to remember the things that oh, she yeah, said. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or she's my little phony. <laughs> That's that's the episode title right oh, there is my little absolutely. phony. Absolutely. Yeah, cuz cuz before it was Hitler wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that we came up with something else. Oh, uh, Kurt also helped her to spread her message. He took on sort of like a manager role and started booking Uriella for speaking engagements all over Europe. And these tours were a massive success, uh, partially because Uriella was fluent in English, French, German, and Italian, and was proficient in a few others as well because Switzerland has like four national languages. No matter where she went, she could still speak with passion. They also helped to bring in a huge influx of cash. In fact, after Kurt took a look at the books, which also just as an aside, maybe don't let the guy who literally got kicked out of Catholicism for fraud do your taxes. Don't let him do that. Yeah, yeah, that's Mm, a bad one. After Kurt took a look at the books, he realized uh, that Fiat Lux was fucking loaded. The speaking engagements, the bathwater sales, and Uriella's dead ex's estate piled up into a very healthy little nest egg. And at Kurt's request, Fiat Lux began expanding their operation, starting with a new home in Germany. The site of Fiat Lux's brand new compound was Black Forest, a beautiful stretch of land right next to the Swiss border. According to Uriella, the land was holy and held special spiritual qualities unlike any other place on earth. The move signified the group's transition from spiritual practice to full-blown lifestyle. Although according to records, it may have been because Uriella and her fraudster husband were under investigation by the Swiss government. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. Yeah. Because, and you're never going to believe this, but apparently, bathwater doesn't do anything. (laughs) What? (laughs) The Swiss Board of Health and other authorities had caught wind of her healing scheme, but you know what they didn't catch? Those taxes, which is a big (laughs) no-no in any country. Uh, Leading up to the move, Uriella's home had been raided five different times. But now things were starting to look up for the group. Uriella, Kurt, and a few hundred dedicated members, and I'm talking like very dedicated, very loyal members, were on their way to Black Forest, Germany to start over in their new compound. And shortly after the move, tragedy struck. Kurt and three other members of the group were driving between their Swiss home and the new compound when they got into a terrible car accident and all of them passed away. Which brings us to sort of a shitty thing. Um, Uriella has had two husbands die, one from illness and one from a terrible car accident. 
But at the same time, she claims to be able to cure any illness and also claims to be able to tell the future by talking to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. at a certain point, why didn't she stop these dudes from dying? And that's kind of what everyone started to ask her. And somehow she was able to turn it into a positive. Because Uriella claimed that a vision had told her about the impending car accident and about her former husband's illness, but that she was not allowed to interfere. She said that like Jesus Christ, her mission was to suffer. And she would eventually absorb all of the suffering in the world and it was her duty to endure it all. If this is a cop out, that is super clever. If that is a voice, that is very if it is a voice that she actually heard in her mind, that is the saddest thing I have ever heard in my entire life. And I don't know which it is because sometimes she believes everything she's saying, and then other times it's like, okay, you know it's bullshit. Then you know, mm. so it just gets very, it's very confusing. This reinforced image of a pure martyr, uh, because remember, she's being like, she's being like uh, persecuted is how she would call it or victimized um, by the Swiss government. So she's like, you know, they're coming after us. We're doing something bad. And also God is making me suffer. (laughs) Oh, no. And so uh, soon all of these followers, their entire lives started to revolve around Guriella because they were like, look at how much she's doing for us. She's enduring all of this pain on our behalf. And so they started looking for ways that they could make sacrifices in their own lives in solidarity with Uriella. So they started adopting her same outfit or at least their, their same aesthetic. Members wore all white Uh, They also extended this into their life choices. So members were on a strict vegetarian diet and they also abstained from alcohol, nicotine, and even caffeine. They were a hundred percent sober. Followers also abstained from sex except for the express purpose of procreation, Um, which means that every time you nut, you got to be having a baby, Mikey. I mean, I'm ready. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Okay, I didn't know. I but congratulations, man. Well, I mean, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you haven't nutted? Oh, wait is is Mikey the virgin of horror virgin? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's me. Totally innocent. Well, it's okay, man. You'll nut one day. You'll meet that special person, mm-hmm. and then you'll nut together. Pale horse, I ride. <laughs> it used to be a brown horse. That's how much he nutted. <laughs> <laughs> Paige won't talk anymore. Uh, I get it. I understand. Um, she doesn't like this anymore. <sighs> followers were also not allowed to read newspapers, watch TV, or listen to the radio. Any news? What did they do all day? Uh, they basically practiced transcendental meditation and listened to whatever bullshit Uriella had to say to them at that point in time. <laughs> I mean, it's very similar to what we see on a lot of compounds where your whole day just revolves around just like, I wonder what that person's thinking. So it doesn't matter what you're doing because no matter what you're doing, your brain is supposed to be thinking about what the fuck is Uriella thinking about? Additionally, members were encouraged to give up modern medicine. If something was wrong, you were only allowed to heal yourself through prayer and through her spiritual cures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Members viewed these sacrifices as the cost of enlightenment. But some members paid more than others. Like in 1988, when one follower, a pregnant woman, came down with an ear infection. And after it went untreated by doctors, the infection spread and became meningitis. Uriella tried to cure her devotee using good vibes and herbs, but none of that helped. After the woman slipped into a coma, her husband fled the compound in the dead of night and took his wife to a hospital. Doctors performed an emergency C-section and saved the baby, but they were not able to save the life of the woman. She passed away shortly after the surgery. And this wasn't an isolated incident either. Several of her followers died from illness or untreated infections that could have easily been prevented by a visit to a doctor's office. But Uriella claimed that their death was because of a failure to adhere to her strict guidelines for clean living. 
and this fear actually strengthened her followers' devotion. Despite Kurt and several other followers' deaths, Fiat Lux was flourishing and growing. The complete devotion of her followers inspired several others to join the group as well. There had to be something special about Uriella if all these otherwise reasonable people decided to just follow her every word. I mean, a lot of these people were highly respected members of society. They weren't just like, you know, we've seen before you get cults of like young people who are just like idealistic and they don't know, you know, they don't know like what the world is mm -hmm. like yet. Um, you know, they're Armando. They start a true crime podcast with their friend Paige Wesley. <laughs> Actually, they don't start it. They hop on to it because... <laughs> <laughs> They're making nachos in a comedy club in Claremont. You know, it's those were good. They nachos. were they were good. A lot of people do that, but the people in this cult they have like families. They have like real jobs. They're you know, they're not just random people. They're all otherwise very reasonable people. And one of these new converts that was brought in uh, by these reasonable people was Eberhard Ike. Eberhard, in addition to having a name that sounds like he is always erect, mm -hmm. uh, was a business whiz kid. He had a degree in business administration and marketing and a huge cot. No, I'm kidding. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> His business savvy and good looks reminded Uriella of a younger Kurt, and it wasn't long until she was married a third time. Uh, Eberhard took over Kurt's position as the group's spokesperson and as Uriella's manager. He was Uriella's new right-hand man, willing to do anything to please her. Although, <laughs> the job was not as easy as he had thought it would be. Uh, there was a reason that Uriella didn't allow her followers to, like, watch the news or read newspapers. Uh, it's because in the late 1980s, the Swiss government's investigation into their spiritual healing scam was ramping up and suddenly everyone was starting to become familiar with her for the wrong reason. Oh. The Swiss Board of Health got their hands on a sample of her famous bathwater and they found out that it was chock full of bacteria, mold, and pus. Here's the real kicker. She was effectively the one causing those infections that would lead to meningitis and other bad shit that would oh, kill no. her followers. Oh, shit. Yeah. From her pussy. Oh, no. Mikey, you said it on a podcast. <laughs> I said I didn't say it. I said a different word. Spelled the same. Wait, is he not allowed to say pussy? He refuses to say pussy. It's a whole Why thing. Why won't you say pussy? <laughs> I just don't use it a lot. I know, man. I mean, we know <laughs> yeah. that. We know you're all yeah, right. Yeah, dude. <laughs> ah, I ain't a pussy. I just jerk <gasps> a lot. Anyway. Um, People like got angry on Twitter about that it. That you don't use the word. That you wouldn't say pussy? Yeah. That you wouldn't say pussy? Yeah. I'll he say wouldn't say that it. That sounds reversed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. Again, that's why she didn't want her followers listening to the radio, watching the news, reading newspapers, because that was what everyone else was realizing at the same fucking time. It's, it was terrible. And in order to try and fix the group's public image, Eberhard scheduled several TV interviews for Uriella. Because when you're in the middle of a scandal, the best thing that you mm -hmm. can do is get on TV, especially when you have a reputation for maybe saying the wildest shit um, and doing some <laughs> terrible stuff and having a compound in the middle of nowhere and yeah. dropping the album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Get out of my brain! I was like, what is she, fucking Kanye? Yes. Maybe it's not a good idea. <laughs> so... <laughs> I had to get liposuction! Before... <laughs> Before, before when everyone learned about her scandal, she was a small unknown cult leader um, that a few people had knowledge of, but most people didn't really pay any attention to. After she went on TV, she became known throughout Germany as one of the craziest people to be living in Germany. She made all of these outlandish claims. She claimed that Adolf Hitler was still alive 
and hiding out in a secret base on the moon. I mean, here's the thing. I don't believe the moon part. But if she had said Argentina instead, I would have been like, she knows. Oh, you know what I'm reading here? She did say Hitler was still alive and hiding out in a secret base in Argentina, comma, the moon. (laughs) 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 That's where the confusion came from. She also claimed that the Pope had been poisoned and had been replaced by a second fake Pope. Clone Pope. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's one of sorry that's one of my favorite futurama jokes of just uh, the space pope <laughs> people loved watching her on tv but mostly just to laugh at her and this light-hearted image kind of took the public's attention off of all of the scandals and it kind of worked out i mean uriella chalked it up as a win when she started people were like oh you murder people on accident but you still murder people and after she went on tv they were like do you hear the lady that was like hitler lives on argentina comma the moon (laughs) weird (laughs) weird. (laughs) hey was it your tv or did you see a horseshoe in her hair right did you see that (laughs) Mm -hmm. so let me guess germany elected her chancellor (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god uh so she continued making public appearances and was even asked to be the subject of a documentary hoping that the footage of her happy healthy followers would attract even more members she agreed she did not get what she hoped for the documentary aired on television in 1992 to over three million viewers and it was a scathing takedown of Uriella and fiat lux it illuminated just how deadly her healing practices could be how isolated her members were and made it abundantly clear that she was nothing but a fraud immediately after the broadcast german authorities began raiding the fiat lux compound taking documents bank statements and as much of the fucking bathwater as they could carry <laughs> i guess their thought process was like if they don't have it they can't use it get the buckets <laughs> take some 21 minutes to make more we'll just come back in 20 minutes there you go <laughs> she'll be too pruny to hurt more people <laughs> In 1994, the German courts ruled that Uriella was a threat to public safety. She was forbidden from offering any medical advice, spiritual or otherwise, under the threat of jail time and a big-ass fine. Additionally, in 1996, German authorities opened an accidental homicide case against Uriella for the death of her followers, including the pregnant woman that we had mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, since all of Uriella's followers willingly refused medical treatment, prosecutors couldn't prove that she was directly at fault and she was acquitted. But legal issues aside, the damage was done. After that court case, over 75% of her followers left the group and the recruitment of new members stopped completely. She was left with only a handful of devoted followers. So the rest of this story is kind of really sad and also hard to piece together. I wasn't as Uh. able to find as much. There are a a few different articles um, of what has happened after that. But really after that, Uriella just started trying to keep members as much as she could. Um, She started coming up with all of these wacky zany ideas that eventually just kind of became like a TV show trying to keep viewers watching uh she even started making crazy crazy claims about a doomsday that was coming um and at first i was like holy shit how crazy is it that two theosophy cults pop like all these theosophy cults pop up at the same time and they're basically saying like the exact same thing that heaven's gate is saying and then i looked at the math and i was like i i think they copied heaven's gate I think they copied Heaven's Gate and she tried to tie it to Y2K and it didn't work. She was like, Y2K is going to kill us all. That's why we're going to be safe because all we need is bathwater. And bathwater doesn't care if your computer doesn't know if it's 1901 or 2001. (laughs) It's fucking crazy. 
Um, she tried doing a bunch of doomsday shit. She tried going on more TV shows. No one really paid attention to her. And then she just kind of withered away. I mean, I wish I could give you like a more definite ending, but she lived until 2019. She, she, she had been alive for a long fucking time. So what you're saying is that bathwater actually (laughs) works. I mean, that's the thing. Mm. You got to roll the dice. It either really works or it doesn't work (laughs) at all. It's not her bathwater. It's showers are bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the fact that she was taking yeah. baths. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She lived to be. By the way, I just did the math. She lived to be ninety years old. Um, yeah. And her group would consistently do some crazy shit up until the end. Uh, most notably, I have one last story here, and this was a story that I was able to piece together from two different <laughs> fucking Swiss newspapers that I was able to find. Uh, but apparently. One of the last things that she was famous for was publicly defending one of Switzerland's worst pedophiles in history. Oh, no. Yeah. This guy was like really, really bad. And it made me wonder, like, why the how the fuck could you defend this person? So this person's crimes, by the way. And they and and by the way, Uriella and her group claimed that this man was completely 100 percent innocent. Okay, so I want you to keep in mind during this entire thing that she. She says that, yes, the things that they proved in court happened, but that doesn't mean that this guy is a pedophile. Okay. What? So this man had adopted two boys and then abused those boys and then had abuse party with other pedophiles and abused those boys was convicted and put into jail and while he was in jail the guards started noticing that cell phone signals were leaving the jail and they raided his cell and found out that somehow he had snuck a cell phone into his cell to continue watching child pornography oh no, oh. no. he is literally the, he's the the worst person possibly imaginable and they defended him and i've tried so hard to find out why they defended him and i can't find anything i can't find anything at all um it doesn't make any sense but uriella wrote a handwritten letter to all of the newspapers and was like hey let him out and the newspapers were like uriella We've been dead for 30 years. <laughs> anyway, maybe that's how she was able to connect with the newspapers because they are dead spirits. What's up? Podcast. We are the next AM radio. One day we'll go out and we will be the same. Anyway, um, <laughs> this has been so much fun. I'm sorry I don't have a definite ending. That's the problem with cults like these is they have a wild story and then their people don't get arrested and they live to be 90 and then they stop doing weird shit when they, go to, when they almost go to jail. Yep. Jeez. Yeah. Mm. Um, the system works. <laughs> sometimes the system works. <laughs> Very rarely the system works. Um, Mikey, Michael Randolph, Mikey... Pusey yes, Randolph, as I've been, I've, I've heard uh-huh. you called in the past before. <laughs> Many times. Um, where can the people find you? The people can find me in the bath. Ooh. I'm get- <laughs> if you go to, if you go to, if you go to coldpodcastshow.com and go to store, you can find Mikey's Bathwater available <laughs> now as a special collab. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does not have healing properties for your physical body. Ooh, but just your soul. Mm. 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 What does it do for your soul? It c- cleans it. Mm. What? <laughs> what kind of cleaning? Like my soul was a dirty, dirty boy. <laughs> well, you Mikey, know, don't... no, don't look away from your camera, Mikey. Look me in the <laughs> eye. Are you saying that my soul is a dirty, dirty boy, and you need to make it clean? I just think it, I just think your your soul needs to be scrubbly, scrubbly dub dubs. Mm. Scrubbly dub dub. Scrubbly dub dub. <laughs> it's scrubbly dub dubs your your soul. Anyway, anyway where, you where, can find me. You can find Mikey on Instagram <laughs> at Soul Daddy. <laughs> at scrubbly dub dubs. At scrubbly dub dubs. Scrubbly dub dubs. Uh, 
You can find me. I, I, I co-host the Horror Virgin, so Horror Virgin on everything on socials. And then my personal social media is at mrandolph24 everywhere. And I would love to hear from you, I guess. Yeah. I don't actually sell my bathwater. I'm more of a shower person. <laughs> yeah. It's the best way to scrubbly dub dub. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, thank you, Mikey. As he mentioned, he is on uh, the Horror Virgin, which is a wonderful, wonderful podcast uh, hosted by Mikey, Paige, and Todd. <laughs> Todd <laughs> Warmonger Schlosser. <laughs> Todd um, Petty. Todd Petty. And, um, <laughs> God. If you don't know what's happening, just go check out the Horror Virgin Twitter page. Hate, okay. Hate. Thank you. Um, it's a fantastic show. They talk about. Uh, a different horror movie every week, which tortures Todd, which is bad for the Todd, but good for the entertainment. Uh, also, mm-hmm. check out their sister show, uh, Romancing the Pod, which is the same thing with romance movies, and it is the funniest show you have ever heard. <laughs> Go fucking listen to it. I love it so much. Um, it's been getting pretty wild, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mikey was on this one, and he already... I'm already chaotic. I'm already just a little... A little <laughs> fucking engine of chaos and then mikey came in and was like hey man i got some ideas and (laughs) and my brain was like let's fucking throw down bud i got some opinions and they are going to be isolated um (laughs) those aren't actually my opinions they're just bits uh hey if you want to support our show uh consider donating money or buying from our sponsor uh scrub a dub lub um (laughs) Scrub a Double Up is the only Tennessee based Mikey Randolph bathwater <laughs> company in the world. It's from a mountain spring. It's from a mountain, mountain spring. Is and my dick. That hey, was- I was going to say, mountain is generous. Grassy Knoll was close. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's from his oh. assy knoll. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's from his assy mole. And. Oh my um, God. <laughs> Yeah, oh. you can if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash cult podcast. Bunch of really fun tiers. Um, we are having a little bit of issues with getting everybody their rewards. Uh, just to let you guys a little peek behind the curtain. Currently, I am moving. And then uh, on top of that, there are a few other projects that uh, I am working on. But I am trying to get that all sorted out. Uh, also, the biggest thing is that Patreon is very difficult to work with when it comes to so physical difficult. rewards. So we are figuring that out. Uh, stand by. We are waiting to get more emails because, you know, I haven't gotten emails back from everybody before we send everything out just so that it's easier. So if you're a Patreon member, go check out our Patreon. Uh, look at the post and we'll get you set up. Uh, if you're looking for a new place to listen to the show, go check out Rooster Tea. Cock a doodle doo. Yeah. Yay! (laughs) Rooster Teeth is a fantastic place uh, to watch a bunch of really fun content, both video and podcasting. Uh, You can check our show out there. You can download the app on your Xbox, your Amazon Fire Stick, your Roku television, your mobile device. You can go to the website itself, roosterteeth.com. You can go there right now. They're probably live streaming something. Uh, Most times during the day, they're live streaming something. Uh, On Tuesdays, uh the funhouse podcast is streaming at 2 p.m pacific time which i am apparently always on now uh which is great i'm i don't want that to sound negative i really like doing the show um (laughs) i like it a lot uh don't tell anyone at funhouse the things i said here Hey, hey guys hey listeners let's be real for a second Don't make me lose a job. Okay. (laughs) Rooster Teeth is fantastic. Go check them out. Uh, Hey, if you want to see more of me, listen to more cult podcasts, watch Funhouse podcast, follow me on Instagram. There's a bunch of cool shit coming up and you're going to love hearing about it. At Mondo Does Stuff. That's M-A-N-D-O Does Stuff. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that shit. I don't know if I said that, but if I didn't, there you go. Uh, it, it's your girl, uh, Pageathan Wesselford, and yeah. mm-hmm. uh, I am super excited. By the time this comes out, I might know more about my comic book. I don't know. I don't know about it right now. I got to see proofs, and they were super cool. I can't wait to show you guys. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, and if you want to send me your bathwater, 
Uh, please slide into those DMs first. You can do, you can do that at Page Wesley on Twitter, at Rampage Wesley on Instagram, and TikTok. Just kidding. Don't do that. I'm not going to drink it. I don't want to have a ton of jars around my house. <laughs> I got better things to do. I like that you'd keep the but, jars. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I have a garden. I'm canning shit. Whatever. And yeah, I love you all. Bye. <laughs> if you want to follow our show on Instagram, you can follow us at Colt Podcast. Or on Twitter at Colt Podcast Show. You can also send us an email to Colt Podcast Show at gmail.com. And if you want to mail us your bath water, don't. But if you do, <laughs> if you absolutely have to, you could send that to 3756 West Avenue 40, Suite K, number 237. Like, like the, the shining. shining, Los Angeles, California, 90065. And for this one, clearly we're going to say don't drink the bath water. Yeah. Uh, but also, <laughs> don't drink the Kool-Aid. Bye. 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 Thanks for having me, you guys. Oh, you're fantastic. I love Anytime. You. <laughs>